I've played Smash Bros Ultimate more than any human probably ever should. From playing as a casual, to going to tournaments, to making hundreds of YouTube videos, you think I would know everything about the game from back to front. But recently I was watching Great Blue's video on TF2 weapons that he never gave a fair go, and it got me thinking, which characters in Smash have I been wrong about? Also, check out that video, it is fantastic. When I launch the game, it's just so easy to pick an Old Faithful, a character that I'm comfortable with, one that I know that I'll do at least decently well, and have some fun. But maybe the most fun character in the game that's just perfect for me might be sitting dormant, waiting for me to unlock their potential. There are so many reasons that I might overlook a character and then just pick Ganondorf for like the 50th time that week. I could be not interested in the character design-wise, uh, they could be too complicated to pick up and play in one or two matches, or maybe I have an unfair perception of what their playstyle has to be. It's just so easy to fall into habits in everyday life. Some of these are good, but a lot of them hold you back, and picking a Smash character is no different. So I set out to give some of my most overlooked characters a true Australian dinky die fair go. That means play them with an open mind for the 95% of you that aren't Australian. Now disclaimer, obviously every character has its fans, but this is just me sharing my subjective and biased experience. And yeah, this does open me up to a lot of criticism and will make me look like a huge hypocrite for constantly shitting on these characters in the past, but that's content baby. And being able to accept you're wrong is a much better personality trait than just doubling down, so hey, it is what it is. Anyway, let's get onto the first character that I have been wrong about. I never really picked Pac-Man because I thought his playstyle had to be very, very defensive where you just run away and you throw projectiles. And it would turn the game into a game of tag. His combos also look extremely technical and complicated, so to get any enjoyment out of him, I thought I would have to spend two weeks in training mode just breaking my controller. Ooh, what the fuck is happening to me? Mix this with the fact that he was released in Smash 4, the least popular Smash game as of recent, and he was F tier in that game, and you can see why I never really played him. And it's a shame, because I only just realized that Pac-Man is the single funniest character in Smash with zero questions asked. The shenanigans you can get up to with this yellow pizza looking guy are truly unrivaled. Pac-Man's gameplay just completely revolves around using all these unique bonus fruit you can get by charging his neutral B. I found myself using all these fruit in different situations and you feel so, so big brain when it actually works out. But often the fruit don't really work how you intend. I was constantly like throwing out the wrong one, but to my surprise, it would usually at least do something, and maybe I'd discover a new potential use for it. For example, I accidentally found out that the incredibly slow moving melon is the ultimate counter to Jigglypuff rollout, when the faster fruit would just pass through her for no reason. I found the bell was insane for ledge trapping because it bounces so many times and stays in the same spot, and I found that the key was completely unreactable online because it is so fast. Sure. I'm not cooking up any gourmet Twitter clips, but I am cooking something, and that's more than I can say for 99% of my Pikachu matches. Another Pac-Man move I was just loving was, of course, the Hydrant. The way that some people just tunnel vision the Hydrant would make you think that they have some kind of, you know, bad history with it. I, I don't really know. Other players that just completely forget about the pressure they're putting on and just go and punch it, letting you escape disadvantage and probably charge up a fruit. But it's not just a defensive tool, if you've ever had trouble edgeguarding K. Rool's helicopter, I know I have, you just repeatedly drop a 200 kilo metal object on his head, and it's all good. And don't forget about the water that it spits out, because where there's a wind box, there's gonna be cheese. While I was playing Pac-Man, I was just constantly finding myself laughing out loud while I was playing him. His up B, the trampoline, becomes an instant death trap after three bounces on it to anyone who touches it, which happened all the time for some reason. His side V, you can turn it around in like a full circle for some unexpected and hilarious angles. And even his down air, which looks innocent enough, might just kill you if you're not careful. Now I do admit, I did learn to do a lot of running away and charging fruit. But I'm not running away to waste time. I'm running away so that I can then run in just with a silly weapon in hand. With Pac-Man, I wasn't exactly winning a lot, but even when I lost, I was still having a lot of fun. I'll definitely be playing a lot more Pac-Man, maybe not against my friends because they don't appreciate the running away, but online and in videos for sure. Corrin unfortunately got the perfect shitstorm of events that led to her, and yes, I'll be referring to Corrin as a her because only psychopaths play male Corrin, being completely forgotten about. 
Not only was she released in Smash 4, which may become a common theme of this video, but she was released as DLC alongside Bayonetta. If you aren't a boomer like me, you might not remember this, but Bayonetta was so broken. She actually got nerfed really hard just after her release and was still broken, so you can imagine how much she outshone Corrin on release. Also, design-wise, Corrin was, to many people, including myself, yet another unwanted Fire Emblem character. You know, no comeback mechanic, no meter, nothing flashy. There were a few changes coming to Smash Ultimate, but not enough for me to give her a real go, which is a shame, because I found that, in my opinion, she's now one of the most fun sword characters. Corrin is, at heart, pretty basic, which, after the fighter passes with the overboard move lists and meters and secret mechanics, is probably a good thing. There's enough unique stuff to keep me interested, but you don't need a master's degree in inputs to perform any of her moves. Her back is one of these unique things. It's a pretty strong move, using her dragon wings to smack your opponent, but being wings, it also pushes you back. While, at first, this led to me killing myself more than anything else, after a while, I started to get the hang of it. This move has a built-in retreat, and it feels so safe to throw out. You can dart in and out of your opponent's range while threatening a kill, which, as far as I can think of, is pretty unique. Corrin's combos also feel reasonably organic. Some moves obviously don't send people flying very far at all, and it just begs you to try and follow them up. I got some nice strings in without having to look anything up. I was just following what seemed logical. Landing Nair and Fair were the main starters, but up tilt and down tilt were great too. Now, I've been known to be absolutely useless at using counters, but Corrin's counter gave me hope. The hitbox on it is massive, so it basically never misses, unlike some others. I'm looking at you, me brawler. Making calling out someone's obvious attacks feel super rewarding. I'm still not sure how to feel about Corrin's down air. Most down airs that send you down with them seem to only spike at the start. Corrin's down air does so for the entire move, so it has that going for it. But the problem is, is that it seems to usually kill you first, and it's so weak because it just doesn't even have a final hit. Except sometimes, they do die first, and I, I win. It's pretty inconsistent, which is never really a good thing for a move, but it does feel good to hit if you're a stock up. Overall, I did enjoy my time with Corrin a lot more than I expected, and I actually got her into Elite Smash. Most characters with moves with the disgusting amount of range, like Min, Minute, and Sephiroth, don't have intuitive combos and focus on getting one hit at a time. Corrin has a few moves with huge range, but also a lot of combo moves, giving her a more unique playstyle than I ever gave her credit for in the past. Out of every single character I chose to play for this video, I was looking forward to Toon Link the least. In a game with three Links, why would you ever pick this one? I always saw Toon Link as just a worse Young Link, and I see Young Link as a more annoying, less interesting version of Link. In my best and worst things about every character video, I said that his only redeeming qualities was the art style and his funny expressions when you punt him in the face. He seems to have less combos than Young Link, while also not hitting anywhere near as hard as Adult Link, so where does this really put him? Well, as I was playing him for this, I actually had a huge turning point when I started to think about the concept of applying pressure. Pressure's a pretty abstract idea, but I'll do my best to explain it. If you cover a lot of options and keep your opponent cornered, they're way more likely to make a mistake. It feels like Toon Link is all about keeping this pressure up and then converting off of their slip-ups. For example, Toon Link's arrow flies so much slower than all the other links, even when it's fully charged. Now, this might seem like a bad thing because it's easier for your opponent to react to it, but it also means that it's out there, limiting your opponent's options for a longer time. The boomerang you throw goes so far, and it comes back when people have forgotten you even tossed it out. Even his grab with the chain covers way more space than adult Link's more typical grab. This just applies so much pressure, and if you can keep it up, you can get away with some pretty unfair plays. Now, this playstyle is undoubtedly not fun to play against, and I'm going to be the first one to admit this. This shit looks so annoying. But the more annoyed someone is, the more predictably they play, and the easier it is to just keep hitting them. People would get so desperate to get in and kill me, they would just run headfirst into my upbeat that I'd be charging up on the floor. Or if they're sick of getting hit by my bombs and they start shielding, I'd just throw it in the air and then grab them, which led to some awesome setups. My kills with Toon Link would often come from following up a projectile. Bomb to forward air is really strong and really consistent, and boomerang to fair also works quite a lot. You can also get more creative if you feel like cooking up something unique. Speaking of cooking, I tried to make the mythical end lag cancelling work, where you purposely do something really stupid as bait, then hit yourself with your bomb to escape and hopefully hit them for trying to punish you. It never worked, 
but I think there's potential here for a hilarious clip, and having this potential makes me more excited to pick up Toon Link again sometime soon. After changing my perspective and thinking about pressure more, I got him from a pretty dire 6 million GSP all the way up to Elite Smash in one sitting, and I'll definitely be giving Toon Link way more of a consideration moving forward. Now for the last character I'll be talking about, they were, once again, added in Smash 4, with some of the most unique mechanics I've ever seen on a character, yet they've become extremely forgotten about, and that is Robin. The design team really just went all out on Robin for no reason. She's the first and only character with aerial smash attacks, and all of her specials have meters that run out and then regenerate, and all of these specials have a lot of nuance to them. Do you know that down B does more damage if you attack your opponent from behind? Like, why? So you might be thinking, why is she one of the most completely overlooked characters? Well, good question. Maybe it's the unwanted Fire Emblem factor, maybe it's the Smash 4 factor, but most likely is that everything she does just feels so slow. Her run speed, the attacks, the projectiles, hell, even charging neutral B feels slow. I see why Robin has grey hair, because she moves about as fast as my grandma. And she's dead. <laughs> but again, open mind, dinky die fair go. So what do I think about Robin now after giving her a real crack? Well, she's still really slow. I had so much trouble against fast characters. It felt like I was just getting rolled the entire match. But then I would look at the percents and... I was winning? Robin does a lot of damage with these smash aerials, and the long-lasting, huge hitboxes make them, you know, reasonably easy to hit. The Electric Leaven Sword even has this lingering hitbox, which is pretty surprising and sometimes led into some nice plays. And her smash attacks on the ground can kill really early if you hit a hard read. But I kinda already knew this. What really surprised me about Robin, which I personally love, was the ability to just completely reversal people off stage. People would come off for me thinking I'm some defenseless slow character, and then BAM! I hit them with the Leaven Sword down air, and they instantly die. The up B goes so far that you can kind of just swing madly on your way back, and the up B even spikes people occasionally, which is not reliable, but when it happens, it is hilarious. I realise that, for me, Robin is one of those hard read, big punish characters. You don't get a lot of opportunities. You spend so much time in disadvantage, you get slapped around a bunch, but when you do get a hit, you gotta make it count. One arc fire at zero, you better be doing 50% of it. If not more, if not killing them. She's like a heavy without being a heavy. Also, the arc fire kinda gives you ledge trapping for dummies, which is disgustingly rewarding. People just love to neutral get up online, and when they die like 80% for it, it's pretty stupid. Surprisingly, I also liked charging the neutral bee quite a lot. I love how you can do it in the air, and it makes you fall slower for some reason, and then you can jump out of it instantly, and go from, oh, I'm running away to charge, to I'm flying at you with a giant electric sword. And I also found a pretty good use for all four different amounts of charge of neutral bay. With all of that said, I do still have a couple of problems with Robin. Why do you not start the game with your Leaven Sword? I have to play like an absolute coward for like the first 10 seconds of every single game. There's no reason for this, and it just makes you play annoying. It does make the Hopcat handshake completely OP though. My other problem is that for how long you have to charge up neutral B, and for how long it takes to throw out the side B, I just wish that these projectiles were a little bit more resilient. If they hit another move, they just vanish. And it's like any move, the weakest moves in the world are deleted. But overall, I had a lot of fun with Robin, and I can see that there's a lot of depth to the character that I could barely even scrape. I think that landing up air must be crazy, and I haven't even touched on using the books that you drop in your combos. So despite her flaws, having such brutal punishes on a character with some good cooking potential, I'm, I'm a fan. I can definitely see the appeal. So after hearing all this, you're probably thinking that I'll like any character if I put enough time to learning them. Well, that's not quite true. I tried a couple of other characters with an open mind for this challenge, and they still sucked. At least for me. I played Banjo, and I played Dr. Mario, both for quite a while, and I just could not get around it. I tried, but these ones were just too much for me. Look, I could still be missing something, I totally accept that, but for now, those ones will stay in the bin. Anyway, let me know what overlooked characters I should give a go next time. This was actually a lot of fun, and it honestly refreshed my enjoyment I was having in my online matches, so I'm keen to do it again soon. I hope you enjoyed a look at some characters that never get any love on my channel, and I'll see you next time.